Hello viewers, myself Dr. KSR Radhika working as associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, SRKR Engineering College, Bhimavaram, Andhra Pradesh. In this session, I am going to explain one of the architectures that can be used in your embedded systems. So the topic today that is going to be discussed is real-time operating system architecture. So the objectives of today's session are to know about RTOS, that is real-time operating system, to explore the differences of RTOS with other architectures, to learn RTOS architecture, to know the advantages and disadvantages of this architecture. First of all, we will see the definition for the real-time operating system. A real-time system. A real-time system, a system is said to be real-time if it is required to complete its work and deliver its service on time. So real-time operating system. So real-time operating system is an operating system intended to serve real-time applications that process data as it comes in, typically without buffer delays. Processing time requirements are measured in shorter increments of times. So this is what is meant by a real-time operating system. And the examples where this real-time operating system architecture is used are flight control systems, nuclear reactors, networked multimedia systems, air traffic control systems, and many more. So whenever we are discussing about the real-time operating system, architecture. So already previously we have discussed about round robin, round robin with interrupts and also function queue scheduling architectures. So whenever we are comparing this real-time operating architecture with others, so there each and every architecture have certain limitations. So this real-time operating system architecture has been here all the limitations have been overcome here. So, uh, for example, suppose in the case of function queue scheduling algorithm also, so they, the low priority task, they, they never, they may not be executed at all. So, such a type of limitations can also be, we, we can overcome those limitations also in the case of real-time operating system. And you can also increase the response time of high priority task. So in many, for example, if you take a nuclear reactor, there will be certain important and urgent tasks to be executed immediately after they have been progressed. So such a type of, uh, such a type of uh, uh, task implementation can be done in the case of real-time operating system. So all the limitations, in the previous architectures, so we can overcome in this architecture. So here this architecture is mainly used for complex applications, complex embedded system applications. So here in the RTOS architecture, so mainly you can concentrate on urgent operation. Whenever if you take, if you consider some applications, in, in some applications, we need to perform certain urgent op operations. So we can give the uh, process time immediately they have been progressed. Okay, so that is, we can give importance to urgent operations. And also, uh, you can signal that there is a work for the task code to do. So you can also give the signal. Signaling between the ISRs and the task codes. So whenever if you are executing the ISRs, so we don't have that interaction. So that's why in the case of RTOS, the signaling between the ISRs and the task code is handled by the RTOS. So and also, so here you can have the problem solving for the shared data. So here we don't need any loop. So no loop. What needs to be done next is only specified in the case of RTOS architecture. So and also 
uh, here uh, we should uh, so he, here we it should also it should also know about which task to which task code to run so uh, that means it should have the knowledge about the task code routines so and also this is preemptive scheduling so why we are saying that it is preemptive scheduling is suppose if it is executing some task or interrupt routine so if while executing that particular task or interrupt routine suppose if some high priority task arrives so immediately whatever it is processing that will be preempted and that the processing the process time will be given for this urgent operation or urgent task so that's why we say that this is preemptive scheduling so this is the limitation of function queue scheduling so their preemption is not possible but in the case of real time operation operating system if you want you can also specify it as preemptive scheduling also and also you can control the task code response and also the isr response so everything can be uh, controlled in the case of rtos architecture so the different types of uh, rtos so uh, we have two different types of rtos one is called as hard real time systems and another one is called as soft real time systems so in the case of hard real time systems so validation by provably correct procedures or extensive simulation that the system always meets the timing constraints is important so that means what suppose whenever you are uh, executing your task uh, your task code or your routines or anything so here the deadlines are given highest importance so suppose if the deadlines are missed then it leads to catastrophic failures so the that is here whenever we are giving some urgent operations or urgent tasks so they are compulsorily they should be completed within the deadline so otherwise it leads to catastrophic failures so in the case of soft real time systems so the demonstration of jobs meeting some statistical constraint success so that is here if you miss the deadlines also they are acceptable so that means only you can uh, there what happens is your response will be increased your response time will be increased that's all but they are acceptable but in the case of hard real time systems they are not acceptable so this is the um, software routine the, uh, for uh, rtos so here you have uh, for example suppose if you have two devices so the two devices you will give it like this and uh, um, here uh, suppose if you, uh, if if you want the control for this device a means what you will do you will set the signal x suppose if you want the control for device b means then you will set the signal for y so that is for device a it is x and for device b it is y so for these are task codes so y task 1 so while true so waiting so this task is waiting for this particular interrupt to occur suppose if this interrupt occurs then what happens it will set the signal x once it sets the signal x so it is waiting for signal x so signal x is that is if it is set here then what happens it will handle the data to or from the io device here. suppose if this this uh, device that is device b Uh, needs the service then what happens this interrupt will occur and it will set the signal y so the task 2 is what it is uh, it is waiting for the signal y to to be set so once the signal y occurs then immediately the control will be given for io device b so like this how many devices you have in your system that many devices you can you can specify so whenever if you are taking this interrupts and uh, task codes here in the case of uh, real time operating systems so the uh, the isrs are uh, been given higher priority and the next the, the all the task code has been given but in the case of rtos you can also specify priorities to your task codes also that is possible in the case of rtos 
so this is how you can give the task priority levels so this is from this is uh, upper is the high priority and the lower is the uh, down is the lower priority in the case of round robin means all are of equal priority in the case of round robin with interrupts means here the device a b so on all these are isrs and Finally, you are giving all the task code. But in the case of real-time operating system, the task code also, you can give the priorities. So here, this is given some priority, some priority like this. So in the case of real-time operating system, you can also specify the priorities for the task codes also. So the characteristics of uh, this real-time operating system are, so here the interrupt routines, uh, the interrupt routines in priority order and also already we have seen that the interrupt routines are given in some priority order and also the task code are also given in priority order. So this is not possible in already whatever we have discussed in the other architectures. And also here uh, one more characteristic is zero plus execution time for uh, interrupt routine. So for uh, immediately uh, once the interrupt occurs, immediately the interrupt routine will be executed for you. So that is, so no waiting will be, there will be no waiting for the interrupt routines. Stability of response when code changes is very good. So whenever you are uh, uh, shifting from one, one, um, one code to another code also, the stability of the response is very good in the case of real-time operating systems architecture. Most complex, although much for complexity, is inside the operating system itself. Here, the, all the control will be provided in the RTOS. So what, what is to be done is, is it is controlled by the RTOS. So everything will be controlled by the RTOS. So while designing the RTOS itself, the complexity will be provided with the RTOS. That is another main characteristic of RTOS. So the differences. So if you consider the differences with the previously discussed architectures uh, that are used for embedded systems, the first one is signaling between the ISR and the task code is handled by the RTOS. So this is one important uh, difference or you can also say it as an advantage of this RTOS. So the signaling between the ISR and the task code, it is handled by the RTOS. And also here, no use of shared variables so no need to use the shared variables and high priority task uh, is executed first and also here um, suspense uh, low priority low priority task so these are the differences with the other architectures so the advantages of uh, rtos are the system's response is good so it will give good response to mainly the high priority task and also another uh, one important thing is independent of the length of the subroutine. So this is uh, uh, this limitation we can we have seen in the function queue scheduling. Suppose if it is uh, suppose if already it is executing some lengthy pro task task. Suppose even though some high priority uh, task arrives, also it has to wait until it completes that particular lengthy process. So this here we don't have that problem because here we also have an option of preemption. So it can stop the presently present executing task and it can start the high priority task. And another advantage is changes to low priority functions does not affect high priority task response. So changes to the low priority function also. Suppose if you consider that some of the low priority tasks are never been executed, so then you can make some changes in your priorities. So even though if you change that uh, priorities also, it won't affect your high priority task responses because they are being given more high priority. Okay. So another one is widely available for purchase. So many of the applications uh, are using this RTOS architecture and there are, uh, um, we have plenty that are being available for purchase. And also you can have immediate solutions in this RTOS, RTOS architecture and useful uh, set of debugging tools are also available for this 
RTOS architecture. These are the advantages of RTOS. And the disadvantage is RTOS itself uses some processing time because here everything, uh, so here uh, the control, we, we have the control with the operating system. That is your RTOS. So that's why it needs some processing time. So that is one disadvantage and also uh, can get better response at the expense of little bit of the throughput. So this is another disadvantage of RTOS. So finally, uh, in, this uh, in this lecture, we have seen what is meant by RTOS and also we have seen the different types of RTOS uh, and also the architecture has been discussed in uh, brief and also we have discussed the characteristics and the advantages and disadvantages of RTOS and also the differences of RTOS with other architectures. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.